Hello and welcome. I'm Whitney Roseborough, one of the marketing coordinators here at Squire. Thanks for joining us today for our social security webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to point out the Q&A section in the top right corner of your screen. Throughout the presentation, feel free to post any questions you may have there. Um, I've also shared a link in there for you to sign up for the Squire Wealth Advisor e-newsletter if you'd like to do that. Now, let me introduce you to our presenters today. Today, we have Dwayne Acey and Nathan Larson. Dwayne is a CPA partner and wealth advisor at Squire. He has 27 years of tax and financial experience. Nathan is also a CPA and wealth advisor for Squire. His focus is financial planning and tax. He enjoys helping his clients with all areas of finance and tax strategies. Take it away, Dwayne. Right, thank you, Whitney. Appreciate that. Um, thank you for attending this uh, webinar, and hopefully, uh, it'll be a, of information and value to you. Um, and so, what we'd like to talk to, about today is uh, Social Security and when you should start receiving your benefits. Um, so, we'll just jump into that. But as Whitney said, if you have any questions, we'd like to get those questions and answer them throughout this discussion. We'd like to have a, a bit of a discussion ongoing, and I'm sure the questions that you will have, someone else might have. So um, we'll go from there. OK, so um, let's see. So when should you restart receiving your retirement benefits? And normally people think of uh, receiving the retirement ben benefits at age 67, or we call it your full retirement age. And um, you, but you can get it before your full retirement age or after your full retirement age. And so generally, what's full retirement age? It's between the ages of 66 and 67. Um, and if you can get it as early as age 62, and if you do that, you get reduced benefits, which we'll talk a little bit about. Or you can wait and take till age 70 and you get increased benefits. And we'll, we'll go through that a little bit. So those are the ages um, basically that we're talking about when we say that we're going to start Social Security. However, as this uh, slide depicts, there's no one size fits all. So just because your parents got it at full retirement age doesn't mean you should. And the, we'll go over with some of the reasoning behind that decision. Um, when you start receiving your benefits, it can really affect how much retirement income you have. And so we think it's very important to really analyze your, your own particular situation and then cater your decisions to that situation. Your decision as to when you receive your benefits also impact your spouse or your survivor's income benefits that they would receive too. So it's a big decision, almost up there with who hey, you're going to marry type thing, you know. Um, so uh, what should you consider first? Uh, you, well, first of all, we want to calculate what is your full retirement age and benefit calcu calculation. Uh, how much are you going to actually receive? And then um, amount of your future benefit and effect of early or delayed retirement. So if we have the full amount, then you can kind of see if we backed off and we got it at age 62, how much you would get, or if you took it at age 70, how much more you would get there. Um, how long do you expect your retirement to last? And so things that we're talking about there is with regard to your life expectancy. Um, well, and we'll get into that. And whether uh, you plan to continue working, that impacts your Social Security benefits as well. Uh, you also want to consider your other sources of income. That'd be like pensions, 401k, and, and other investments, IRAs, etc. And then we also want to um, throw into the mix always is the income taxes. So we can there's things that we can do to help minimize your income taxes um, over, you know, by putting a good plan together and coordinating, coordinating that with your um, receipt of Social Security benefits. And then also we should consider again what, what how your spouse might be impacted by it. 
So as we mentioned, your full retirement age, depending on when you were born, you're going to be somewhere between the ages of 66 and 67. And so you can just look at that chart. Uh, generally, it's you know 66 add a few months for a couple of years there and then you're at 67 for 1960 and later so that would be your full retirement age so i'm at um i was born in 67 so my full retirement age will be 67. so how is your benefit calculated basically they take your uh, 35 highest annual earnings they index it for inflation they average that and then they apply a formula to determine what your Social Security benefit is going to be a monthly benefit. Um, so the question is what if I should start taking benefits at an earlier age, like let's say at age 62. And this is just an example. Uh, we have a person here at age 62. If they filed for Social Security, they could get 1350 a month. If they waited till age 66, it'd be $1,800 per month. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty big reduction in their full retirement benefit, but there might be reasons that this person would want to take that retirement benefit early or at age 62 versus wait until 66 or even 67 years old. And we'll talk about that. Um, one of the benefits might be that they get the benefits over a longer period of time. You know, so if you go from 62 to 66, you got basically five years, four to five years, or 67, uh, four to five years of time that you're receiving payments for. And so the break even, I went and calculated the break even. If you take it at 62 based on these numbers versus wait until 67 or 70, it's between 15 and 17 years out, 15 and 18 years out actually, uh, where you would actually be receiving more money if you waited, but you'd have to wait that much, to, you know, that much longer. So, so it's a, it's an important question, you know, do you delay, do you receive it for, you know, right at your retirement age or do you receive it at age 62? Um, so if you delay retirements, you can delay them all the way up to age 70. And um, what you do is it says here, it says you received, you received delayed re retirement credits until age 70, which means you still get what you would have re otherwise received, but it's just delayed. Now, the benefit of waiting until age 70 is that your benefits actually increase 8% per year, which is pretty significant. So. In this situation, if we received um, back to the, our original example, if we got Social Security at age 62, we got 1350 per month. But if we waited to age 70, you're getting $2,376 per month. So that's a, as calculated here, 76% more benefit than if you would have received it at age 62. So that's, that's a pretty big uh, difference. So as shown here, if you waited till age 70, the difference is $129,600. So you, that's where you, I calculated that break even. And so you'd have to go out a number of years to actually recoup that if you, if you had waited until age 70. Any questions on that that we have? We all good? We don't have any questions yet. If you have a question about Social Security or anything, just put it in the Q&A and we'll, we'll answer them as we go. Thank you. OK, so one of the things that we like to talk about with our clients is uh, the longevity of the individual person and to determine how long they, they think they're going to live. Nobody has a crystal ball and some crystal balls are fairly hazy, right? Not too clear, but at least we have the discussion with our clients. Now, according to the National Center for Health Statistics, a 65 year old man today can expect to live on average to age 83 and a 65 year old woman to age 85. So uh, if you retire at age 62, that's 21 more years or 22, right? Plus, or a couple more years on top of that, that you have to make your money last. And if you're only living off of your social security, that can, that can be a, a pretty hard thing to do. So we want to maximize Social Security. Uh, even if you're not just living on Social Security, we want to 
have the most income that you can have during your retirement and so that you can meet your needs. Also, this is according to Social Security Administration, one out of four retirees will live past age 90 and one out of 10 will live past age 95. So, uh, and then I think like for my age, age 53, my spouse or I, they, they're projecting that either one of us would live to be 94. So our money needs to last if I retire at age 65, basically 30 years. So that's a long time, but it's also a long time to receive social security benefits. Okay, so other factors that we want to consider is do you still plan to continue working? If you plan to continue working and you start, you say, oh, well, I'm going to receive my benefits at age 62, that, that, how does that impact your Social Security earnings? So you start your Social Security benefits. If you are still working and you're, be, you know, before your full retirement age, your Social Security benefit will be reduced. And it will be reduced all the way up until you turn age 67 or 66, your full retirement age, right? So after that point, your earnings from a job, you could still be working. It's not going to reduce your Social Security benefit. So how does it impact your, your Social Security benefits if you're still working? So if it's before full retirement age, $1 uh, uh, is withheld from Social Security for every two dollars that earnings exceed an the annual limit of eighteen thousand nine hundred sixty dollars in twenty twenty one. If the year you reach full retirement age, it's one dollar is withheld for every three dollars that earnings exceed the annual limit of fifty thousand five hundred twenty. And then the after at or after the full retirement age, it's your earnings. Like I said previously, they will not be impacted. Social Security now. Again, just want to say that you don't lose those benefits. They get paid back to you each year. They're recalculated and they're added to your Social Security um, if you had those withheld from you uh, by taking them before your full retirement age. So, so just so you're aware that that's the case, you don't actually lose them. OK, so when will you receive your retirement benefits or when should you um, decide to receive Social Security? And it, the question needs to be taken in conjunction with other things such as your job earnings, pension benefits. So if you get a pension, um, you know, on some, some payment amount, monthly payment, if you have other rent income or things like that, and then other savings and investments. Um, these are all impacted you as to when you should receive your Social Security benefits. Um, so now going back to the taxability of your Social Security, um, what the way it's taxable is, is up to 50% of your Social Security may be taxable if your combined income is 25,000 to 34,000. If you're single, I should, I'll just stick with the, let's just go with married filing jointly, 32,000 to 44,000. And then after 44,000, up to 85% of your Social Security is taxable. Now, don't get confused. It's, just, it's not 85% of your Social Security is taxed. That's the tax on it. No, it's, it's just 85% of your total Social Security benefit is then lumped into your taxable income. And that is, that is taxed. So just wanted to be clear on that. So the other thing is when you're making these decisions, if you if, if you decide to when you decide to take your Social Security determines how much your spouse spouse's benefit could be. If your spouse is relying on your earnings record for her benefit, that can be a big decision. It also impacts. Um, so so the question is we might when we're meeting with our clients, we might want to say, OK, that you might want to wait, you know, the one one individual may want to wait till age 70, but the other one might want to start when they're age 65. It just depends on the individual situation going back to our statement that no one size fits, you know, fits all. And so uh, there's definitely um, items, spousal items to consider and when you're making this decision. 
So, um, so retirement benefits based on your earnings record at full retirement age, 100% of your full retirement benefits. So what we're talking about here is you, you, your spouse. So let's say in my case, my wife's a homemaker. She does not have um, 35 years of earnings, uh, even if, if she has a number, a couple of years, but she most likely will not. Um, her earnings records will not play into the Social Security calculation because we won't take her earnings. We'll use mine and she'll qualify for 50% generally of my full retirement benefit. Um, and then if I pass away, um, she will be entitled to, generally speaking, she's entitled to my full retirement benefit. So, so there's some considerations that you need to take into consideration again when you're talking about receiving Social Security because you have to say also, how does this impact my my spouse? So it's surviving spouse and I touched about on this a little bit. Surviving spouse generally receives the greater of the retirement benefit the worker was receiving or her or his or her own benefit. Um, the survivor's benefits may be payable as early as age 60 subject to reduction. So if I died, my wife could potentially get it Social Security benefits at age 60, but because she's below her full retirement age, she would have a reduced amount. There's also this um, provision for people that were born before January 2nd, 1954. Um, basically, they can they can draw on their own earnings record for Social Security, and then at age 70, they can do a switcheroo and um, use their spouse's um, uh, earnings record for their benefits. And that sometimes yields a higher overall benefit to the individuals. So that's something to be considered if you're born before January 2nd, 1954. We're kind of getting to the point where this may not come into play because most people are, you know, right now I'm 1954, that's 13 years older than I am. So that puts you at 66. So. In a couple of years, probably this slide won't be applicable. <laughs> but um, so that's a pretty fast um, overview of Social Security and and the benefits. And let me just kind of re recap what those are. You know why you would choose to take Social Security early versus waiting to full retirement age versus waiting until after. Uh, age 66 or 67 and taking it at age 70. Um, you may, one of the reasons might be you wouldn't just need the money right now. Another might be, um, you know, you don't have a lot long life expectancy. I have a client that has a heart situation and he and I both did the calculations. He did it independent of me uh, and he was all doing regression analysis and all this kind of stuff on his and based on, you know, when he thinks he's going to pass away based on people that have similar conditions to him. And so he, you know, we determined between us, we we talked about it and he determined that he wanted to take his um, benefits early on um, so that he could, because he just doesn't think he's going to live past 83, 84. Um, also, if you have other investment vehicles available to you, for example, if you have a Roth IRA or a, just a regular investment account, you might want to just, and you have that money sitting there, It you might want to just pull on that at age 67 or 65 or 66 or whatever and delay getting your Social Security benefits so that you get an 8% return on your Social Security, right? So um, that just makes sense um, in some situations. Um, your spouse may want to delay taking benefits just depending on how that impacts your overall cash position and, in, and how much money you have in retirement. So um, th th those are just some of the reasons why you might want to take it earlier or take it later. Um, you know, I added on a few more things here. You can see the list up there. We've touched on those, um, but there's a lot of things to consider and it is a, in my opinion, it's a very important decision and some some thought should be taken and in, put into it to decide when you should be receiving your Social Security benefits. And I think also, in addition to that, is it really is in the best interest of the you know the person to 
combine that decision with their other financial situation, you know, their other investments they have and the, the other income that they have coming into play. You got to combine that with, like we said, longevity and just the other things that you may not have considered. And that's what we're here for, Nathan and I, and our wealth advisor team is so that we can bring those types of things to the forefront and you can talk about it and, and then make a very informed decision. I would encourage you, I've done this personally, I've gone out to Social Security website. It's pretty easy. You go out to www.ssa.gov and you can register and just get, you know, put register your name, put in a password and you can get your Social Security benefits at an, and your Social Security record at any given point in time. And um, so I've done that and I've encouraged my clients to do that. It's really nice because Social Security is one of the few um, fixed income vehicles that are out there that most people in, in our country in the United States uh, relies on, you know, for their for the retirement. Um, and then you will probably want to contact the Social Security Administration or at least an investment advisor might help you on this at least three, min three months prior to your rate reaching age 62 because I mean even if you're 63, 64 or some other agent haven't started, I'd encourage you to talk to a professional to determine, you know, should we should we jump on this bandwagon right now and take our Social Security or should we delay it or what? But again, as you can see from all the things that we've discussed, it's it's a very um, complex decision, but can be made with uh, the right information in front of you. So and then how do you get your Social Security? You can apply online by phone or in person. And so I think Provo has a social security, uh, you know, office, Salt Lake City, a few other places like that all over the country. But um, yeah, they're trying to make it easy. Um, so we'd like to answer any questions any of you might have at the moment. And uh, Whitney, I think maybe we, we could even take verbal questions, I guess, at that point, at this point too, if we can. I don't know if, we're, we, if that's available. Attendees are not uh, able to use Maybe a microphone. Okay. They'll have to type it in. Yep. Rats. I was hoping we could do that. One one question I just wanted to that came through was um, a little bit more in the, the the person wanted a little bit more in depth on uh, discussion about spousal benefits, particularly for non-working spouses. So the how that works. Um, in order to qualify for benefits, you actually have to have worked 10 years or they, they do it by quarter. So it's 40 quarters, um, 10 years of, of working experience, paying into the social security system with either W-2 wages where you had social security taxes taken out or self-employment income where you paid, you paid uh, self-employment taxes, which go to social security. Um, that's to qualify for your own benefit. If you don't meet that requirement, um, and you're married, then you are eligible for a 50% of your spouse's benefits. So in our example earlier, the full retirement age benefit of the worker was $1,800 a month. If that was my my spouse and I hadn't worked, you know, during my enough to qualify for my own benefits, then I would get 50% of that, which is $900. And and the starting point on that spousal benefit is when I turn when I reach full retirement age. So when you know when I reached age 67, if I took benefits early, I would have an 8% reduction each year. I I took benefits early, so that $900 would would be reduced. One thing to note as well is that the spousal benefit does not earn delayed retirement credits. So once the spouse's age is full retirement age, they're not going to get an increase in the future. So sometimes what we've seen, if if you've got the working spouse is a few years older, um then then the non-working spouse you know it might make sense for the working spouse to delay because they're earning the full retirement credits and then when the non-working spouse is full retirement age even if that's before the working spouse was age 70 it's probably a good idea to jump in and take benefits at that point because the spousal benefits not going to grow and and they would you know you would just be leaving benefits on the table so it's, it's really complicated each situation is unique and different, especially for married couples, because there's age differences. And depending on what those age differences are, there's the timing does make a big difference. So 
hopefully that helps with the spousal benefits. OK, there's a oh, what about divorced spouses? Uh, divorced spouses, as long as you were married 10 years, you can claim benefits on your divorced spouse's earnings record um, until you until you get married and and that until you get married, it depends on the year. So if you get married before your age 60, then the divorced spouse's earnings record is no longer available. If you get married after age 60, you actually have a choice on who which spouse's earnings record you want to claim benefits on. So tricky, tricky there. Um, best thing to do in that case is just come and talk to us. We can we can talk specifically about what's going on in your life and how to, you know, what what may be best for you. Now, one other, I guess one other thing that's come up in the past is if multiple spouses can claim benefits on the the retired, you know, the retiree. So and the answer is yes, is from my understanding. Yeah, it can get really crazy if you have somebody. <laughs> let's say you had a doctor who has, you know, maximum social security earnings, which for 2021 it's 143,000 roughly. Um, if they've had that for several years, they've got a, you know, significant social security benefits. If they've had several marriages along the way, they they could have multiple spouses claiming benefits on their earnings record. It doesn't affect that doctor's individual benefit, but yeah, that is kind of a weird a weird thing there to um you know if if you're if you were married 10 years and you're divorced then you have a little bit of of room on on whose earnings record you might be able to claim benefits on correct okay looks like there's a question if my spouse worked most of their career at a government that opted out of social security can they receive the spousal benefit so the answer to that is is maybe and and it, it may be reduced. There is a government pension offset with Social Security benefits. So if you worked, you know, if the earnings record you're claiming benefits on was was a government, you know, that opted out of of paying Social Security taxes, then and you're getting a pension in in replacement of that, then there is a, a government pension offset with Social Security benefits. And we can calculate what your potential benefit may be based on that pension. If, if you know if you come in and talk to us and you have information on on what your government pension is going to be, we can we can do that. Keep the questions coming. Um, if you've got a question, there's chance a good chance someone else has that same question. Um, while while we're waiting for more questions, I will just talk a little bit about the solvency of the social security system because there's a lot of misinformation and you know the news likes to talk about how how it, the social security system is bankrupt and how it's going to run out of money and and whatnot and so just so just to ease people's minds a little bit and talk about how it works. It's a pay as you go system. So we've got workers who are paying Social Security taxes. Those taxes go into the trust fund and then the trust fund is used to pay out benefits. We um, by you know back in 1950 when people didn't live as long and we had a lot more workers, we actually had 16 workers for every retired person receiving benefits. In 2015, that was down to just under three workers for every person receiving benefits. And by 2035, it's estimated to be around two workers for every person receiving benefits. So it, it there is a strain on the system. There's not enough Social Security taxes going in to pay out as much benefits, you know, as that, that we need to based on what the government's promised us here. And so by 2035, the trust fund is estimated to run out. Like right now it has, you know, $3 trillion on nearly in it. Um, and those there's more going out than is coming in. And if you think about balancing your checkbook, it's usually bad to have more money going out than more money coming in. And that's where we're at with Social Security. And so by 2035, that trust fund will run out. And if Congress doesn't make any changes to Social Security, the worst case scenario is about a 25% reduction in benefits. So that means you know you'd you'd get 75 cents on the dollar 
for you know as reduced benefits now personally i think congress will will figure this out there's lots of little things that can be changed along the way to to kind of shore up the system the problem is with the political environment this might not happen until 2035 but um, some of those things that could could sure up the system. We could raise the payroll tax rates. I've heard as much as or as little as a one percent increase in in the social security tax on both the employee and the employer would would kind of solve it. I don't like tax increases, but I think I'd be willing to pay one percent extra if if it shored up the system for you know people who really needed it and. There's other things, you know, they'll probably extend the full retirement age. They already they already tweaked that as we as Dwayne discussed. They could um, raise the Social Security wage base right now. It's 143,000. I think in the president president's tax proposal after that 143,000 of, of Social Security wages, there's there was a proposal to start taxing wages again once once they were over 400,000 I think it was something like that. So lots of things they could do there. They could take the wage base off completely and and tax, you know, more. Um lots of things that could be done there, but um it it'll be, my feeling is that it will be there. It's just it may be different. Um there may be some changes along the way, uh but yeah. So that's that's where we're at there. Any other questions? No other questions. Um, one thing, one more thing to just add. Generally, it's best to delay. Um, of course, everyone's circumstances are different, and you know we have to kind of work through that. And that's what Dwayne and I do: is sit down with people and analyze and plan and and look at their you know your unique situation to come up with the recommendation. But generally, it's best to delay. Um, if you are married, one thing to think about is is your joint life expectancy. So Dwayne kind of touched on on the life expectancies for men is 83 and for women it's 85. That's if you're if you've already reached the age of 65. Um, but there's a good chance that one spouse in a married couple will live till 90 and, and even till 95. And so joint life expectancy becomes a really important concept um your biggest risk in retirement is not dying it's actually living a long time and running out of money and so by delaying social security you can you know buy yourself some longevity insurance to protect you know to protect yourself or your spouse if if you or or them live a, lo a long long time and so that's that's something to consider too you may not be healthy um you know, you might have a lower life expectancy for whatever reason, but if your spouse has a longer life expectancy, you may want to delay benefits anyway and just just protect them from from a long from longevity and from running out of money in retirement. And then I would just add to that that, you know, we're here to help maximize your retirement income and make sure that you're getting the most benefit and to help you not run out of money. You know, my my grandmother died uh, last year at age 104, so, and she did not run out of money, and she attributes that to having a good investment advisor with her. But um, so, you know, reliance solely on Social Security is just it's probably not the best thing. If if that's all you have, that's all you have. But where we can come into play is help you now. There's almost everybody can do something now and improve their situation, their retirement income situation. And that's why we are here um, to help you answer those questions about Social Security, but also to help you um, maximize your retirement income and make sure you don't run out of money. All right, if there's no other questions, then uh, we'll turn the time back over to Whitney. Thanks for joining us today. I will be sending out the slides as well as um, the recording of this webinar to all of you later today. Thanks and have a good day.